Hey guys, it's Wave618. It's the 29th of April 2019. We're approaching 7 p.m. BST. Today we're going to do an update on Bitcoin. We've got a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about the long term count on Bitcoin. I'm going to justify why at present it looks like uh, there is a bearish setup developing right here. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of debate right now whether we're bullish from 3.1k down here or whether this is still very much a, a bear trend and so we've got to look at the various trend uh, parameters to determine whether the bear trend has been broken or not so we're going to be discussing that in depth in this video to determine whether we can expect price to be going higher or lower and how we can capitalize on either movement should they occur all right so that's what we can look forward in, to in today's video if you're interested stay tuned All right, guys, so let's get started. All right, now before I just start, uh, you know, discussing about the chart here, just want to mention quickly uh, for those of you that are interested in my educational course, it's gone down really well, got really good feedback from the people uh, that have signed up. We've got a Discord going where, where people are, you know, further developing their knowledge of trading by being able to apply their skills with like minded people within the group who have all completed the course. So, it's, so far it's going down very well. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna be doing a 50% discount on that from just after this video. It's gonna be for three days. So there's time for you all, time for you all to jump on that if you're interested. And uh, yeah, so just wanted to mention that. I'll leave the link in the description of the video. But yeah, let's not waste too much time on that. Let's talk about Bitcoin. That's what we're all here to you know, get a better insight into. So first of all, you can see here the way I've labeled it. It's actually an original count that I had uh, a while back. I did change it uh, with my last video and my last few videos just because there was good uh, confluence with uh, another um, with the Fibonacci projection levels. I won't go into that just now. I want to talk about this count. This was my original count. It was the count that allowed me to forecast the 3.2K bottom. So basically this was your W wave. X wave is a descending triangle. That's an A, B, C, D, and E. And then we had a further three legs down to make the Y wave. All right. So once we got to 3.2K, obviously I was monitoring it really, really cautiously. And I was trying to determine, are we going to be bullish uh, from here? Because obviously a WXY is typically a completion of a corrective pattern. Now, what I really like to see when we form a bottom is confirmation of the bottom. Um, and for that, I use volume. I believe volume is very, very important. You know, there's three main components to any chart. That's price, time, and volume. Volume essentially validates price and it tells you what wave you're in. So it's absolutely vital for Elliott Wave. Um, so it's a huge piece of information within any chart. Now, if we just pull up volume, for me, after seeing such, you know, a completion of a quite a long drawn out uh, bear market, I would expect high volume to be to be coming in. And so this was our bottom here. And I was expecting much bigger spikes in volume at this point. And we haven't really seen what I would consider to be, you know, really high volume, the high volume that I, that I was expecting. Um, so for that reason, I've been very, very cautious during this move. And I've been looking at it as a corrective move for a, another Z wave, which again will be a corrective pattern. Now Z waves, typically they will finish beyond the Y wave, but there is no rule to say that they have to. So a Z wave, it just means we're going to have another a uh, corrective sequence that follows on from the second X wave, which is this X wave here. Um, <clears throat> so that's essentially what a WXYXZ is. You've got three corrective patterns joined by two X waves, but there's no rule to say Z has to finish lower. Now, I plotted it down here because I will have been very interested to see if we hit this 3K level, just because if you look across here, this horizontal line here, you can see it's a very good resistance support flip level. So I wouldn't be too surprised if we saw price gravitate to this level. Okay, but that's just a, a hypothetical 
uh, target for the time being. I will be closely monitoring price to see how it comes down to determine whether we're likely to see it fall short and then continue higher, or are we going to see it come down to 3K? Uh, of course, a lot of people will be interested to know, is it going to come down even lower? Will it test the median line, for example? And uh, certainly it's possible, but I mean, this level at 3K is certainly a level you'd want to, if you were short, you'd want to be taking profits just because there's going to be a lot of support at that level. Um, but yeah, before we go into that, let's talk about this price action. As I say, I've been looking at it as a corrective sequence. So I'm going to explain the corrective Elliott wave count. And just for those of you who will likely be interested in the bullish count, I'll address that also because at present, you can never know with 100% certainty whether this is going to turn out bullish or bearish. So we need to be, be ready for both scenarios. But as I say, I'm leaning bearish at present until the markers of this downtrend have been broken, the pitchfork being one of them. And you can see here we've hit the upper warning line. So the way we draw this pitchfork is use the, um, the first three pivots. Um, so using your beginning of the first wave, your end of the first wave, and the end of your second wave, which is our X. And so you get this pitchfork, you can see since this point was made, we then retested our upper median line, fell down to the median line, uh, broke uh, quite aggressively through the upper median line, and now we've found resistance at the upper warning line. So that's one resistance level. Um, Obviously, one I've posted on Twitter also is if we just, I'm sure most of you are already aware of it because it's been quite popularly, uh, popular to talk about on uh, Twitter, but the 50-week moving average, um, simple moving average, is acting as a good resistance at this level also. And why is that significant? Well, if we just focus on the, the 50, uh, let's take up the 200, the 100, and the 20, uh, so the 50 is our blue line, and you can see whenever it gets broken, it, price generally tends to trend. Um, let's clean the chart up a bit. So you can see here, price always stayed above the 50, then it bounced, tested it here, uh, eventually broke through, and once it broke through, it started to trend. It then came up, tested it, failed, and then, so it backed up, had another go, then it broke, and you can see again we stayed above it all the way up throughout the uptrend then what happened we came down tested it once tested it twice third time we broke through retested trended down so now usually when you test the 50 there's usually a bit of a bounce back now it may bounce back and then come back up to test it again yeah and then break through but at least you'd expect a little bit of a bounce off this line. Usually it doesn't break it first time round. It requires a bit of a consolidation in price before it breaks through. So for me, this is it's a, uh, with every chart, they all have their own, every chart has its own characteristics or personality, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so you want to find a moving average that works well for that chart. And it will be a different value for different charts. Uh, Bitcoin, I'm very happy with this 50 week uh, simple moving average. I think it is very significant. Uh, of all the other moving averages that I've looked at, this is probably the one I prefer. A lot of people talk about the 200 week moving average just because it acted as good support back here in 2015 uh, and now it's acting as good support again. By all means, that is significant, uh, but let's not forget it's only really been tested uh, once before so before I I don't think that's too statistically significant but the 200 week is always a an important parameter for any trend any market you look at to the 200 week moving average is one I always look at because it often marks um, you know the bottom of a uh, a bear market or the top of a, a bull a bull market even so um, yeah so that's uh, the moving average now just going back to what we were talking about so let's take that off and <clears throat> so yeah as i was saying we've got our wxy play out then we've got this formation here so let's address the elliott wave first of all from the corrective sequence just because i wasn't too happy with the volume so um going on the daily 
Okay, so the way I was looking at it, for me, this was our initial move up, looked pretty impulsive, but then we got a lot of consolidation here. And if we pull up volume, you can see that throughout this whole move, from here all the way to here, there was a general declining volume. So, so from the start, which is here, so volume here, down to here, you can see generally there's a spectrum, a downtrend in the volume, okay? So for me, that suggests that it's all one big uh, corrective sequence. So the way I was looking at it, I was seeing three wave patterns, three waves down, and then you can see for me, this point here is actually lower than this point, so this is where I'd start the count. I count seven waves up, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that f when you see that, you should be thinking the corrective sequence WXY. Um, again, WXY is a three wave count. Then you can see three waves down. And then it looks, if you zoom in further, you can see another three waves up to here and then another three waves down. So essentially what I was looking at it as it was a uh, ascending triangle. So this was wave A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, so with an ascending triangle, what have you got? So you've got your flat top, horizontal top. Obviously, you're never going to get all points reaching the same exact level. You can see wave D fell a bit short, uh, but then you've got your ascending, uh, your higher lows at the bottom of the triangle. Okay, so I'd class this as an ascending triangle. You've got your depleting volume throughout the whole move, and then you get your, your strong thrust after the breakout of the triangle to the upside with this aggressive move breakout high volume suggesting the corrective pattern was over so the other interesting thing about this is let's look at the fibonacci relationship of the the move in compared with the the move out so this for me is what gives further confirmation to the count so from here to here Okay, we hit it absolutely bang on, 1.618, okay? So very, very nice Fibonacci relationship. What happened after we hit 1.618? We saw big red candle down. Again, giving confirmation to the count. You know, again, it's suggesting that that bearish, uh, you know, the bear market is not over. This is looking like corrective sequence. We've hit the 50-week simple moving average. We've hit the top of this pitchfork, which was created using price action for the last one year um, and then on the short term we've seen completion of a three wave count that's a first wave triangle second wave third wave up um, so three waves suggesting correction right there so plenty of confluence and as i say we didn't see too much volume following 3.1k to suggest this was a major impulse um, suggesting the beginning of the wave five which is what i'm expecting uh, because up until what I, for the last one year, I believe we've been making a major wave fall. That's the way I've been counting it from the genesis from 10 years ago. Um, okay, so this is obviously the, um, the bearish view here. And so you have to, whether you're bullish or bearish, I mean, if you, even if you're bullish, you have to take into consideration the counter argument and there's going to be a, a, a wall of resistance at this level. Of course, if we go higher, then that's a, a bit of a disaster for the bear, for any bears, because if this wave is 1.618 extension of this wave, that's already quite an extended. Um, so I'd, I'd count it as a probably an A B C C wave doesn't usually, you know, go uh, more than the 1.618. Uh, fib extension of the A wave. So, um, so yeah, if it goes any higher, the bears should be very, very cautious. And for that reason, I would probably switch my sentiment completely if we went higher than this. Of course, we'll, we'll be going into horizontal resistance should we go any higher. So I'm not too sure about you know going long immediately. But what I'm saying is my bias would switch because for me, the bears need to hold on to this level for obvious reasons, we've got the warning line, we've got the 50 simple moving average, and when that breaks, the 50 weeks simple moving average, that 
often suggest we're going to trend. Um, so yeah, they're the two major things that I will look for to determine trend. It's the, the simple moving averages and the, the pitchforks. Now, I think they're hugely important and it puts Elliott Wave into context because obviously if you don't have context, you don't know whether you're looking for a corrective sequence or an impulse sequence here. For me, at present, using my strategy, I'm using a corrective count purely because uh, lack of volume and we're hitting the upper warning line and it's shown a good response at that level. But obviously we need to see what happens next. So I did tell you that I was gonna look at the bullish scenario as well. So first of all, if we're gonna be bullish, so calling this a wave one, wave two is not usually a triangle, okay? It can happen, but it's very unusual not probable and so we shouldn't really be drawing up that count because it's the least probably the least probable scenario um, <clears throat> of course we could say one two and then we're going to wave three which is a 1.618 extension of wave one but uh, it's a little bit unusual so i'm not going to go down that route just yet so we have to think about an alternative count so perhaps wave one and then wave two down to here now the problem is Following that, if this is the start, if this is wave one, this is two, and wave three is gonna start here. Well, as I mentioned, this point is lower than this point, and from here, you've got seven waves up, up to here. So really, with an impulse, you should have five waves. Now, on other exchanges, this point is actually higher than this point, in which case you can begin your count here. One, two, three, four, five. I think on the bit for next chart, uh, you, you actually get that, um, you can get that count. So but there's a little bit of ambiguity. So let's give it the benefit of the doubt. Let's say you can start your count here. So you've got your wave one, two, and your wave three starts here. Okay, so now let's use our FIB. You wanna see a wave three really being a 1.618 extension of wave one. Okay, so we've, we've gone past the 1.618. So either wave three, finished here and now we're beginning with wave four but then uh, it's going even higher so for me it's suggesting the wave three probably hasn't finished and we may just be going up to the 2.618 so let's just plot a little price tag there this is all hypothetical obviously i'm entertaining the bullish argument here this is not my preferred count just want to make that clear um, just for those of you i know a lot of people will be interested in the bullish scenario so i'm just putting it out there and it's something to look into if we do see price going higher. So um, it's good to always be ready because I can't guarantee I'll be able to do a video, you know, as soon as price breaks. So um, yeah, so if this is wave one, two, three. Um, so breaking it down further, the wave three that started here. So you've got this is your wave one, this is your wave two. Yeah, I can't see any other way of drawing it. I, you can't say wave two finished here as an ascending triangle because again, wave twos aren't usually triangles. And also the wave two looks pretty damn short compared to the wave one, which is another reason I don't like this bullish count. But anyway, let's give it the benefit of the doubt. So wave one, wave two comes down to here. And we've got our wave three coming here. There was a bit of a pullback and it's looking like it could have been a Sorry, we should really be zoomed in here, but uh, let's say let's say maybe we could say the wave three came up to here. Then we've got like a running flat A B C wave four, and then we're seeing a bit of a perhaps some kind of a or wave three coming to here A B C wave four. And then we're trying to make a wave five up to here. For me, it's not it's not very clear at all. It requires zooming in further. I, I've already made a lot of you know, uh, given this count a lot of leeway. As I say, I'm not happy with this uh, seven waves up. I'm not happy with this very short wave two. Um, so there's plenty of reasons I really don't like this count. But anyway, there is that argument that we could see a wave three come up to here. And that does coincide with a lot of horizontal uh, resistance at this level right here. Yeah. So if we do come up to there, fair enough. Uh, as I say, any break of this upper warning line, I'll be getting concerned uh, from a bearish point of view. Um, certainly I wouldn't say, oh, you should automatically go long. 
because obviously we're, we're going into overhead resistance at this level and on top of that just because you break above a warning line it doesn't mean the bearish uh, downtrend is over because it could turn out to be a weekly or monthly wick and price could fall straight back within this um, <clears throat> within this pitchfork okay so just like we saw here price broke below the median line but came back within you want to look for the high time frame candle closes really this is a bear market that's lasted over a year so you want to be looking for monthly closes really so as I say, just because price breaks to the upside, for me, that wouldn't be a reason to jump in and go long. Um, and as I say, if this is a wave one, two and wave three, then uh, we're going to be seeing a big retracement for the wave four soon enough. Um, so for me, even if it was looking bullish, I wouldn't be jumping in at this point. Uh, for me, that would be... Uh, yeah, the wrong thing to do and um, as I say there's no reason why the bear should you know lose any confidence at this point until obviously we get this upper warning line taken out so that's the way I'm looking at it as I say there is perhaps some kind of bullish count you might be able to fathom up here um, so yeah wave one two three up to here the wave three still seems to be playing out one two three some kind of wave four playing out a b c probably running flat and then you final move up to wave five um if this was our wave four running flat so it's going on the four hourly so typically you get a three three five and at present it looks like we've got a one, two, three, four. So it's probably going to be more of an expanded flat if we're going to see a fifth wave down. And yeah, I'm not going to go too much into it, but either way, even if you were bullish, this wave four that may be playing out would need to come down further before it goes higher to finish that wave five, the way I'm looking at it. But uh, And it is looking like it's rolling over at this point. Obviously, Bitcoin can do funny things with these, you know, so-called Bart Simpson type playouts, which I've never really been a fan of. There's usually a, a good Elliott Wave explanation rather than calling it a, a Bart Simpson move. But um, yeah, for me, this is looking like it's starting to roll over. And yeah, for, it's looking like it's probably going to come down to, to the downside. Um, but yeah, I would say any fall below the bulls should be very concerned any fall below probably 4700 that is where you know the bulls need to be getting concerned this move may come down to here and test that 4700 um, but yeah this is the way I'm looking at it just want to make clear why I'm um, my high time frame bias is still that the the bear market has been held um, still if I was to be trading, I would be trading short at this point. Um, and yeah, I'm still waiting for confirmation because what I'm waiting is probably for the 4700 level to get taken out and see more volume come in. I really want to see this consolidation at present, see how it plays out. I want to see when we get volume, I want to see the price falls to the downside. But anyway, um, yeah, I think that wraps it up just a little bit about my thoughts on what Bitcoin is doing at present. And um, yeah, any queries, just uh, put them in the comments down below. I'll try to address as many as I can. If you found today's video of any use, then please yeah, uh, show your appreciation, leave a like. And um, yeah, as I say, if you're interested in the course, I'll be doing a 50% discount. I'll put it in the description and I'll put it on Twitter as well. All right, guys, take care. Thank you.